So the second step is to install Kali. Well, since we'll use the OVA file, it'd be better to say import for this step. And the download's finished. So let's look at the file location. It's under the download folder. Now I'll open the VMware Fusion interface. From the Add button at the upper left corner, choose Import. Click the Choose File button and choose the OVA file you just downloaded and click OK. And as you see, VMware Fusion reads the file and then detects the VM as Kali Linux 2020.2. We can click Continue for the next step. Now it's asking for the location of the VM. And this folder works for me. Now I think it's better to collect all the VMs in a folder so you can manage them easier. It will create a single file with this name. Now I'll click Save. And it starts to import. It may take a couple of minutes. So I want to look at the size of the empty space on my host. DF command simply displays the free disk space and dash H parameter makes the result human readable. I have 192 gigabytes of free space and that'll be quite enough for this installation. Installation's finished and this is the summary of the VM. RAM is two gigabytes by default. And if you have enough RAM on your host system, I suggest you increase it. Networking is NAT at just as I want. Okay, click Finish to finish the installation of Kali VM. Now it's asking if you want to upgrade the VM. I say, okay, why not? So our new Kali is booting for the first time. And we're here at the login screen. Let me make the VM full screen. Okay. Now, in addition to the changes that I mentioned in the previous lecture, there is another important change in this Kali 2020.2 release. The default user account is now a standard, unprivileged user. Kali is no longer using the super user account root by default. Right? So the new default credentials are Kali and Kali. And welcome to Kali 2020.2. So let's open a terminal screen and check the network connection. When I run the ifconfig command with standard user privileges, I will get an error because the ifconfig command is under the sbin folder and requires root privileges. So why don't we have a look inside that? sbin folder. As you can see, I can run the cd, pwd, and ls commands without sudo. These commands do not require root privileges. However, the commands that are under the sbin folder must be run with sudo. If config is here, and let's run this command with sudo. And it's okay now. Of course, there is a more practical solution. We can always switch the user to root so that we don't have to write sudo for every command that requires root privileges. So let's run sudo su. Okay, so I'm, I'm root now. And I'll double check that with the who am I command. Well, now I can run any command which requires super user privileges without sudo. And this is my IP address. If if config didn't obtain an IP address, uh, that means that you have a problem with your network configuration. It's not a problem. Problems do occur. And I certainly will give you some solutions to fix any possible network problems in the next lecture. So now we're on the last step. Fix the problems and run Kali. Now in this 
lecture, I will assume that you do have trouble with network connections, and I'm going to give you some solutions so that you can fix the problem. Now, hopefully you're not facing such a problem, so if you don't have a network situation, uh, please, you don't have to apply any of these solutions in this lesson, but it's good to have you on the ride, and you can always sharpen your troubleshooting skills. So first off, let's reboot the machine to understand whether the problem is an exception for the initial run or not. So I shut down the virtual machine because I want to look at the settings of it. And click the settings button. Click processors and memory. I want to make the RAM 3 gigabytes. So now I can click the start button to boot it again. Now let me look at the network adapter while it's booting. Click on network adapter. Internet is shared in that mode, and that's what I want. Username and password are both Kali. Okay, we are in again. So let's check the network connection by clicking the network icon at the upper right hand corner. So I think there's a problem on the DHCP of the VMware. Well, anyway, we can live without DHCP as well. Um, so I'm looking at the wired network. Uh, don't be confused, even though you share the wireless connection of your host machine, it's simulated as a wired network in the VM. So let's open a terminal screen and look at the networking service if it's running. Write service networking and press tab twice to see the available commands of the service. Networking service does not have status command, so I'll assume that it's not started and try to start it. And if you are still not connected at this point, let's go to Network Settings. You can go to Network Settings via Advanced Network Settings under the menu. Or you can right-click on the network icon in the upper right corner and select Edit Connections. Now click the wheel icon under the wire tab. Okay. Okay. I go to the IPv4 tab to set the IP manually. Click the manual option. I'll choose an IP for the new Kali. Now the IP block of my virtual network is 172.161.131.0 through 24. So I'll choose an IP from this block. Netmask is 255.255.255.0 for a 24 IP block. As far as I remember, the gateway is 172.16.131.2. So I'll use 8.8.8.8, .8 that's the Google DNS, as my DNS server. Okay. Um, let me look at another VM's network settings. So this is Kali I'm currently using. Go to Network Settings, select Wired Settings. Click the wheel icon under the Wired tab. Go to the IPv4 tab. Yes, the gateway is correct. Okay, I'll reboot the machine to be sure that the changes are applied. Boot completed. So open a terminal screen, type if config to see the IP address of the new Kali. It's 225, just as we said. So let's ping a remote system, for example, Google DNS 8.8.8.8. .8 yes, we received the response packages, and that works okay now. So to double check, open a browser and visit any website. 